The Speed Day Shoe is the companion to your carbon plated racer and it serves a very important role in your rotation. It's got to be fast enough to hit your quickest paces, but durable enough to withstand your longest workouts. Your Speed Day shoes have to strike a delicate balance, and here are my top five favorites of 2021. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi, a non-elite runner who has happened to have tested a lot of shoes this year. And today what I wanna do is go over my top five favorite speed day shoes of 2021. Now, before I give you my thoughts, I do wanna go over some disclosures. I bought some of these shoes and some of these shoes were sent to me, but regardless of how a shoe got to my feet, no one's paying me to make this video or to include their shoe on this list and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before this video goes up on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's get into my top five favorite speed day shoes of 2021. First, I'm gonna go with my favorite. It's the Endorphin Speed 2. This was my shoe of the year last year in 2021. There was basically no change. There was a minor update to the upper, I think, pretty much to me. I think it's the exact same shoe. I don't think that I could in like a blind taste test, a blind foot test, tell which one is which. And for me, that's a pretty good thing because the shoe was fantastic and it still is this year. It's got Saucony's Power Run PB midsole foam, which is nice and bouncy. It's lightweight and they've combined that with a nylon plate to give it just a little bit of extra stability and a little bit of extra propulsion as you're going through that foot strike. I'm able to use this shoe for short and fast workouts and for my longer marathon pace workouts as well. And I can even take it for just some regular easy runs because the foam is a little bit more forgiving, at least as far as comparing it to a carbon plated racer. So the shoe for me exhibits a really wide range of versatility. And in fact, most of the shoes that are on the list that I'm going to be talking about today, not only can be used as workout shoes, but can probably also be used as the daily trainer for a lot of you guys out there that are looking for a shoe that may be a little bit lighter weight, maybe has a little bit lower of a stack height. These shoes can probably serve a wide range of purposes for you. This shoe, I think, kind of exemplifies what this field should be, and that's why it's the number one in my Speed Day shoes. Coming in at number two is the Audio 6, which in a lot of ways is kind of an old favorite, but in a lot of other ways is very new. This spot probably would have gone to like the Boston in previous years, like the Boston 9, which I think was probably peak Boston, but the Boston changed quite a bit this year. I'm not a huge fan of those changes, but fortunately the Audio 6 is kind of the spiritual successor to what the Boston 9 was. This year they're using a combination of Light Strike and a little puck of Light Strike Pro where your feet land and hit the ground if you are a four foot striker. And I think that combination is really nice. It kind of feels like an updated version of the Boston 9. And I'm using it pretty much exactly the same way as I use the Boston. It can maybe be used for your shorter everyday run, but primarily you're gonna use it for those workouts. And that Light Strike Pro, because it is a little bit firmer of a material at slower speeds, really comes to life when you are using it at those workouts. Cause then you're putting enough force into those foams and you're really pushing them and squeezing them in the right way to get the right response that you're looking for out of those foams. And the Audio 6, I almost said Boston. The Audio 6 does it in such an exciting way. And I'm glad that even though the Boston has gone a different direction, there's still kind of like something for the fans that love the old way the Boston was. And if you did like the Boston, I say go with the Audio 6. It's my number two favorite speed shoe of 2021. For number three, we're coming in with the New Balance Rebel version two. I like the Rebel version one, but there's been a substantial pivot to get to the Rebel version two, and I think it made for a much more exciting shoe. I love the version of fuel cell foam that they're using in the midsole of the Rebel version two. It is lightweight, it is super springy, and I feel like it makes for a very fast shoe. The upper is pretty snug, like you would expect for the lot of the shoes kind of in this speed category, but the overall ride put together is something that is comfortable enough that a lot of people have been using this shoe as their daily trainer. But for me, because the stack height is a little bit on the shorter side and because the shoe is so lightweight, I like to save it for those days where I wanna go a little bit faster. Maybe I've got a couple of pickups and some strides at the end of a run, or maybe I'm doing a little bit more of a fart lick, or even if I could take it to the track, I think that it would fit in really well there. 
I feel like for the faster days, that's where I really think that the Rebel 2 shines, and that's why I'm gonna put it in my number three spot for Speed Shoes of 2021. For number four, I'm gonna come in with the Rincon 3. The Rincon 3 had what appeared to be only minor changes to the Rincon 2, but I think that those little changes added up to be a big deal. And I'm really enjoying what the Rincon 3 is bringing. I feel like it's a little less speedy than the version two and the version one were. So that's a little bit of a downside, but we're getting an exchange is a little bit more durability. They've changed the layout and the configuration of some of the pods of rubber that they have on the outsole. So I feel like that's really helped in terms of its long-term durability and I feel like it's overall just a little bit more day-to-day -day livable shoe so it's a little bit more kind of like in that daily trainer category but the shoe can still really pick up the pace the compression molded EVA I think is still a very lightweight and fast foam and this is the shoe that I brought with me to New York to film not only the USATF 5k but also the New York City Marathon and I was able to in the ring cons while also holding two cameras this camera with a telephoto lens and my GoPro run along and keep up with world elite athletes I mean, not for very long, but I was able to keep up with them and able to get some really fun footage while running alongside them in the Ring Con 3. And then later on in the weekend, I was able to wear those shoes in the airport and be super comfortable. So the shoe has quite a bit of range. Again, another shoe that you can probably use as your everyday trainer, but it's also a shoe that's very ready and willing to hop into those tough workouts as well. And that's why I put the Ring Con 3 at number four. Four. Coming in at number five, I'm going to throw in a little bit of a wild car, something that maybe doesn't exactly fit into the category. And for that, I'm going to go to Hoka again for the Carbon X2. Now, this shoe I think doesn't exactly fit as a speed day shoe because it has a carbon fiber plate, but I also feel like a lot of people have been using this shoe as their speed day shoe, as their workout shoe, and maybe going to a different carbon plated shoe for their race day shoe. And I've kind of been using this shoe similarly. So I've been really enjoying it for some of those longer workouts. Maybe I've got a long run with a couple of miles strung together at either marathon pace or maybe half marathon pace. I feel like the Carbon X2 made some changes to at least the springiness of the carbon where I felt it a little bit more. I still wish I could feel a little bit more of it, but I felt the carbon a little bit more and I felt like the Profly midsole softened up just a bit in order to make the shoe a little bit more livable for those of us who maybe don't have exactly perfect foot strike. I use this shoe for everything from racing the 10K portion of my first triathlon that I raced in, and I really enjoyed it there, all the way up to some of my longer runs in some of my marathon builds, and I have enjoyed running in the shoe at everything kind of in between. I don't really consider it to me as being a maybe a marathon super shoe. I wouldn't really want to race a marathon in it, but it's something that I'd be happy to take along with me for some of my marathon workouts in my next buildup. So because I've been enjoying the shoe, as a speed shoe and not necessarily as a carbon plate racer, it doesn't exactly fit in this category, but I'm gonna put it at my number five anyway as my wild card in my favorite speed shoes of 2021. So those are my top five speed shoes of 2021. Let me know in the comments if you have some other options that you think definitely should have been on this list. I'd love to hear about it in the comments below or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?